Congratulations on your new 2022 Tab 320S and welcome to the New Camp family. Before you get started on your adventures, we're gonna take a look at your trailer and review some details, some basic operations that will help you enjoy your trailer with confidence. Let's get started. Let's start right up front connecting the trailer to your tow vehicle. First, lift this handle up and pull the collar back on the hitch. That allows you to back the vehicle up so that the ball is directly underneath. Crank your trailer down onto the ball and then replace the collar. Lift up, push forward, and you can tell that it's latched into place when these tabs go into the slot right on the top of the coupler. Next, you will wanna connect the seven-way plug to the vehicle. There is a slot at the top of this plug that will line up with the indention in the receptacle. So be sure to push the plug all the way in and the cap will come down and lock on the end of that slot to keep it in place. Now, this seven-way plug is not only going to charge your battery in your trailer when you're driving, but it is also gonna allow the electric trailer brakes to work on the trailer when you step on the brake in the vehicle. You're going to have to add a brake controller to the vehicle, and that can happen two different ways. You can add that brake controller under the dash, or you can get a wireless one that goes between the plug and your vehicle. Either way, that will allow the trailer brakes to engage every time you step on the brake pedal. Next, you'll take the chains on the trailer, cross them in front of the trailer, and connect them to the hitch on your vehicle. You'll also want to connect the breakaway cable. If the trailer separates from the vehicle, it pulls a pin off the trailer, which automatically locks up the brakes on the trailer so it stops. This can hook up the same place the chains do, and just be sure that nothing is low to the ground and going to drag on the road. Once you're fully connected to the vehicle, turn the crank on your tongue jack to raise it up as high as it will go. Once you've done that, you can pull this pin to remove the caster underneath, and that will just drop off the bottom of the pole, and you can store it in the tub on the trailer or in your vehicle. Now remember, when you wanna drop the trailer and disconnect from your vehicle, to pin this back on so that you can move your trailer around easily. Before you leave, you'll wanna be sure to go behind the trailer and double check that the lights on the back of the trailer are working in sync with the lights on your vehicle. Inside the diamond plate tub is the five gallon propane tank. Now, if you need to remove this for refilling, just turn the handle to the right to be sure it's closed. You can disconnect the hose right here and there is a wing nut underneath. Just loosen that. You may need a pair of pliers or you may be able to do it by hand. Lift the tank out to refill it. It's also able to be exchanged at a convenience store if you prefer exchanging it rather than finding a filling station. In front of it right here, the regulator, and to the right, this is the battery disconnect switch. Right now you can see that the battery is horizontal uh, and it looks very operational there. If you turn it a quarter turn, the battery is on its side and that means your battery is disconnected from the camper. That's a good thing to do when you're in storage. It is the same operationally as removing the leads off the top of the battery. So only put it in this position when it's in storage and you don't need to charge that battery. Turn it back to the right when you're using it so that not only can the system charge when you're connected to the vehicle or when you're plugged in at shore power, but also with your solar panel. Most dealers will provide you with a battery on this side of the compartment. You can see that there's several different fuses here. One of them is for the battery. The other two are gonna be connected to the solar panels. You do have a 105 watt solar panel on the roof that will be charging this battery whenever it's in the sun and another portable solar panel plug on the side of this tub. The solar plug that's on the side is a two-prong plug. Now, if you have a portable solar panel and it has a little different style plug, no worries. You can pick up an adapter online. It's not expensive, works great with any solar panel.
Now, if you were thinking of running a portable solar panel in addition to the solar panel on the top, that's great. You can run both at the same time. The handles mounted on the front of the tab trailer are great for maneuvering this to exactly where you want it to be. The aluminum tray underneath the tub is part of the boondock package and it is great for extra storage. The handles on the front make it really easy to maneuver this trailer wherever you want it to go. On the driver's side, the first compartment is the cassette toilet. It's a watertight compartment, so these latches are a little stiff to open, but new in 2022, they have added a lock to this compartment. Open this up, and to pull the cassette out, you wanna lift the tab underneath it. Lift that up, pull it out, and you can grab the handle right as it comes out. Now, when you do that, this flap automatically closes, so there's nothing messy about it. Once you set it on the ground, lower this handle down and pull it out to release it. That allows you to take this anywhere you need to go to dump it. Now it can be dumped at a toilet or at a dump station, whatever's most convenient to you. To dump the cassette, simply remove the cap at the end of the tube and swivel it out to the side. Then when you lift it up, there is a handle on the back and you'll want to push this green button. That allows air into the tank so there's no splashing when you dump. Push this down to allow the air to come in, dump the tank, turn it right back up, put the cap back on, and swivel it back into place. Then just slide it right back into place. It's going to open the flap and lock itself into position. Remember at this point to go inside and put more chemicals inside the toilet to be sure to keep that tank nice and clean. The TAB 320S has four stabilizing jacks, and once you have your trailer leveled, you can put these down to stabilize it so it's not moving around when you're walking around in your trailer. Just connect that on there, and all you need to do is crank these down so they're snug to the ground. Now, if you have an electric drill, you can use a socket and do the same thing. Behind the wheel is the connection for your 30 amp plug. So with your trailer, you will get the shore power cord and you'll see that it has three slots. One has a bit of an L in it. You'll wanna line that up with the plug. Once you've got that lined up, just push the cord in all the way and you should be able to turn it to the right just about a quarter of an inch. There is an additional locking feature with a collar here that's threaded so that you can tighten it and keep it more secure. Next is the Nautilus system. Now again, you will have this latch to hold the door secure and closed, and in 2022, they've added the lock. The magnet's gonna hold it open, and inside, let's talk about connecting the water to the hydrant. At your campsite, you will run the water hose up through the bottom, through this hatch, and you can see there's a slot that you can open up. So the hose goes right in here and you can close the hatch over the hose. The hose will connect right here where it says water connection. Pull the cap off and connect it right there. There is a similar connection on the other side and just above it says sanitize and winterize. So this is the one for connecting to the hydrant. The one on the left will be if you want to sanitize your system or if you're ready to winterize. Now a note about winterizing, there is a bypass valve in red on this left side of the compartment and that's something that you will use during winterization. But if you need more details on that, check the New Camp Owner's Manual. All right, back in this compartment at the upper right hand corner, there is a cable connection. If you're at a park that has cable, just pull in that cord, connect it right here, and you'll have cable on the television. You'll also see auxiliary and satellite. Now these two are not connected, but they are available there in case you'd like to utilize them for something. In the center, you will see a tank flush and it simply has a cap over it because there is no black tank. There is only the cassette toilet, so you don't need a tank flush. On the left, the water pump switch, if you wanna pump water out of your fresh water tank. 
In the center of this panel are the green and blue levers. Now those are the most confusing sometimes, but those are set according to what you would like your Nautilus panel to do. If you're using the city water right here on the right, you'll want them to look like this. If you're dry camping, you will match that picture right there. Now to fill the fresh water tank, set them this way. To sanitize or winterize, just follow the pictures. One more thing, there is a light on the right-hand side of this compartment. Now the switch can toggle to the right or to the left. One way it's gonna turn the light on, the other way it's gonna set it to motion sensor. If you set it to motion sensor setting, then whenever you reach your hand in, it's gonna come on. Great feature whenever you need it. Underneath the Nautilus system is the low point drains and the sewer connection. You can see the low point drain knobs right here and that will help to just drain the lines if you're trying to winterize or again, just get some of the water out so it stays fresh. To the right of that, the sewer connection is a gray tank pole and here is where you connect the sewer hose. If you've never done this before, it's very simple. Just take the cap off. You can see the bayonet fittings right here and you will see those same bayonet fittings on the sewer hose. Just take your hose, connect it up so that the knobs on the pipe are connected right inside those hooks and it's secure. Connect the other side at the dump station or at your campsite and pull this gray tab right here. Just pull it straight out, push it in when you're done and reattach the cap. Very simple. This is a vent for the Aldi system and next to that, the outside shower. Pretty self-explanatory, you have the hot and the cold water and pull the handle out for use. Now the top presses down to actually engage the shower and it can lock down. When you wanna release it, push down on the top and it'll bounce back up and stop the water flow. Then just replace it right back in this compartment when you're done and close the latch. The cage and the rack are part of the boondock option if you've chosen that for your trailer. But there's a feature underneath I wanna show you here on the passenger side. It is the gas port. Now this is a great feature for adding a gas grill or any other gas appliance. Now the way this works is you pull the plug out and you'll notice that this lever is going perpendicular. That means that it has cut off the gas to this pipe. To connect the hose from your grill, you're gonna to have to have this lever in the perpendicular position. Now to connect it, just push back on the collar, insert the nozzle at the end of your hose, and then release that collar to come back over it to lock in the hose. Then to start the gas flow, just pull this lever forward. Now, in order to disconnect the hose, you are gonna to have to turn off the gas, make it perpendicular again, so the collar can slide back, the hose can release, and you're ready to travel. Remember before you travel to check to be sure this lever is in the perpendicular position and that you have this cap on the end because that's gonna keep out the dirt and the road debris. Now the table on the TAP 320S goes outside or inside. It operates exactly the same way either place and mounts the same way as well. So let's show you that operation here. Because the table swivels in all directions, then you can control it with these black handles. Once you pull this handle away from the arm, it allows you to turn it freely. Now to actually turn the gear to the right, you can engage it and turn it, pull it out to get it back in place to turn it again. If you wanna turn it the other direction, just pull it out to disengage it and re-engage on this side and turn it. That way you can tighten and loosen each connection. You can place the table in the position you'd like it to be and at every handle, tighten it into place. The table is actually in three sections. There's the table, the arm underneath, and the post. Most people are able to keep the arm and the table together and just disconnect it right here. Once you've loosened this connection, 
just lift it off the base right here and you can see that you've got the table and the base together. I'll set this down and you'll want to do the same thing here to release this arm from the base. It slides right out. To reattach this on the inside or the outside, just of course do it exactly the opposite way. You'll slide this down on the post and then tighten the handle. There are two handles on the base pole and that will help you adjust the height of your table. Right now it's down low, but if you loosen that, you can raise this up and then tighten the lower handle here. And that will give you a taller table. Next to the table is the 110 plugs. Now keep in mind that these household plugs, both on the inside and the outside, won't operate unless you're plugged into shore power. Now one more thing before we go inside, I want to show you the step. This is the boondock step, but it works very similar to the standard step. And all you do is lift it up and it folds right under the camper. You notice the step light goes out when it's in. When you're ready, just pull it straight out. It's going to drop back down and the step light will come on. Now let's go inside and take a look around. Heading into the trailer, there's a fire extinguisher on the right hand side. This is one of three safety features in this trailer. Now there is a pointer right here and you want to be sure that that is in the green zone. That tells you that this fire extinguisher is in good working condition, it's fully charged, and it's ready to work if you need it. The other thing I want to point out is the handle. To open the door, you press down in the green zone and it'll pop back up. But if you're inside the camper and you'd like to lock the door, just push it up into the locking position that's red. And then of course back to the center to unlock it. Also, the portal window has a blackout shade. So this can pull all the way up for a full blackout. But when you're traveling, all of your shades need to be in the compressed position. So be sure you pull it right back down. Okay, let's step inside. Just inside, you'll see the kitchen right here on your right. Let's start with the two burner glass top stove. Just lift the glass top cover. And to light the burners, you will want to take the first knob, push in and turn it to light. Once you have gas coming out of the burner, then you push the sparker right here in the middle. And you may have to push it more than once to get the burner to light. But once it lights, just adjust the knob to the desired height of the flame between high and low. When you're done, turn off the burner and be sure to let it cool off before you lower the glass top. One more thing, to put this glass top down, be sure you lift it up before you lower it. There shouldn't be any resistance when you're lowering that glass top down. Next to the stove is the sink with a single handle faucet. Now to adjust the temperature, you will move this left to right, and to make the water come out of the faucet, you'll pull it up. So adjust the temperature, lift it up, press it down when you want to turn off the faucet. Let's take a look at the refrigerator underneath the stove. Now this is a 12 volt compressor refrigerator, very different than the 12 volt refrigerators that you may have used in the past, because this is run just like the one at your house. It is very efficient when it comes to battery usage. And of course, when you're plugged in at the campsite, that is charging your battery that in turn is running your refrigerator. Now, when you open the refrigerator, you'll notice the light comes on automatically and there's a small freezer compartment. Just lift up the door. And on the right, this is the control to turn on the refrigerator and to adjust the temperature. If this control is on zero, then the refrigerator isn't operating. If you turn this, you have an option to go one to seven, and that's gonna adjust how cold the refrigerator gets. Most refrigerators, when it's very cold outside, they don't need to be on the highest setting. And in turn, if it's an extremely hot day, you may need to turn that up to six or seven. Next, I wanna show you the latches on the cabinets and the drawers. Right now, you can see that it's flush and that means that this cabinet is locked closed. That's what you want it to look like when you travel. Now to open the cabinet, 
simply push in and it will pop out, create a handle, and the cabinet will open. Let me show you from this side. To lock it, simply push it in and it's flush. Open it up for the handle. And remember, always check those latches before you travel. Be sure they're locked in place. While we're here in this cabinet, there is a 12 volt plug in, two USBs and a standard 110 plug. That allows you to put appliances or any other coffee pots or anything like that on top of the counter, run it down through this cord access right here and plug it in underneath. Stepping into the wet bath, you'll see the sink across the back. Let's take a look at the faucet. The bar on the end is gonna control the water. If you turn it right to left, again, rotating it will make it hotter or colder. Lifting it up will turn on the faucet. Pushing it back down will stop the water flow. Now this is a little bit different because this faucet doubles as a shower. If you pull it out, you've got a handheld shower, but you also, right back here behind me, have a place to lock in that shower head for a standard shower. Release it and it slides right back in to place as a faucet for the sink. The cassette toilet is a very simple operation. On the left, you'll find a blue button. When you push that button, it is gonna put water in the bowl. You'll also see three lights. Right now, you're only showing one green light. Now those lights are gonna show you how full the cassette is underneath. When you need to flush, just pull the handle down, open the valve and the toilet flushes. Very simple operation there. The only other thing in this bathroom is going to be the light above me, which is simply a push button on and off and the cover for the toilet paper. On the side of the bathroom wall is the Aldi system controls and the air aid air conditioner controls. Let's start with the Aldi. If you turn that on, let it cycle for just a minute and you'll see the temperature in the trailer right now. Now this top icon on the right, that is showing you that it's plugged into shore power. If you push the menu button again, that gives you the controls. Since the Aldi controls not only the heat in the trailer, but also the hot water, let's start on the top. This top line is the setting for the heat in the trailer. You can raise and lower that by pushing the negative and the positive sign. The second line is the hot water system. Now you can push the plus sign and you see that that bar is halfway filled in. That shows that the hot water is running on normal mode. If you wanted to boost that because you wanted hot water quickly, you can do that by pushing this plus sign again. You see that is filled in completely and that means it's on boost mode and it will stay there for 30 minutes before it drops back to normal mode again. However, in order to make either of these systems work, you will have to select the power source. This is the electrical power source here. The gas source is down below. If we turn on the electric power source, there's one kilowatt. You can hit this plus sign again for two kilowatts. Now the difference is one kilowatt is for plugging into a 110 power source. If you're doing that at your house or Camping in the driveway, that one kilowatt will be what your system can manage. If you're plugged into a 30 amp at the campsite, boost it up to two kilowatts for more power. If you decide you'd like to run the system on gas, push the little gas symbol here, and now you have it running on gas. We have both the electric and the gas selected, but your system cannot run on both gas and electric it's gonna choose one. Which one is it gonna choose? That depends on how you have the system set. So let's take a look at that. If you hit settings right here on the right, most of these icons that you see are for the brightness in the screen, a night mode, maybe setting some parameters on when it comes on and goes off, the timers. But this prio in the top right-hand corner is what prioritizes if you're running it on electric or gas. 
Right now, it is set to prioritize electric. That means that if you have electric and gas chosen, it's gonna run on electric. If for some reason you don't have electric power, it will move over and run on gas. So remember that if you choose both, it's gonna choose the first of what you prioritized and then move over to the second. Down below, the Air 8 is what controls your air conditioner. Again, a lot of icons, but simple to use once you understand what they mean. To turn on the Air 8 controls for the air conditioner, just use the center icon, push that, and it's gonna tell you the temperature in the trailer at this moment. Now, this icon right here, the snowflake, is telling you that it is on air conditioner mode. There are three different modes, and you change it by pressing the triangle. That's fan mode, and that is dry mode. The dry mode is there for simply removing condensation, but it doesn't cool the trailer. The other thing about the dry mode is that it only works on low fan speed. On the air conditioner mode or the fan mode, you have a choice of low, medium, high on your fan. Okay, so to change modes, you press the triangle here and you can go through the modes. Down here below is the fan speed and there is the icon for the fan speed right there. There are other combinations that you can do to set the date, the time. There's even a timer on this, different functions, a night mode, uh, that can all be done by looking in the manual and seeing the combination of buttons to push to get those settings. But those are the main settings that you will need to operate the air conditioner. Now, while we're here, let me point out the air conditioner vent at the top. It is directional, so you can turn it to point it in different directions. Uh, there are two more, one in the center underneath the dinette cushion and one right by the door at the end of the seating. So be sure you've got all those vents open for maximum cooling. Below is the 12 volt television. So this is running off the battery power. If you're boondocking or not plugged in, TV is still gonna work. It has a bungee cord that's holding it secured against the wall for when you travel. Just unhook the bungee and this is gonna swivel to any direction that you need. Just be sure to reattach that bungee to hold it secure when you're traveling down the road. The upper cabinet is going to be a microwave if you chose that option for your tab. If not, you've got a little more storage. In this cabinet, there is a pinch latch underneath. Just pinch it. As you open the cabinet, it's going to unlatch and then it will lock automatically when you close the cabinet. If you decide you would like to add a microwave, all you need to do is unscrew this back panel. There is a hole in the base behind it where you can drop the cord in and plug it in to the 110 socket on this wall. Next to the cabinet is the AM FM stereo. Of course, it's Bluetooth and it has the USB connection and the HDMI port. Directly above me in the center of the cabin is going to be the power fan. First thing you need to do is unlock it. It's a little latch right here. Once you unlock it, you can open it with the handle right here. And there is three different fan speeds. You can set it on one, two, or three. Once you set that fan speed, you can also set this thermostat control and it makes the fan come on if the camper gets too hot or too cold. So an adjustment right here for that if you would like it to work automatically. Now, if you don't want that thermostat to come into play, Always put it in the extreme left or right position uh, and you won't have any problem with it. There is two ways here. So you could actually pull air in from the outside or draw air out of the camper. Just be sure to stop the fan from spinning before you change directions. If not, you might blow the fuse on it. And if for some reason you do need to replace that fuse, it's located right here. Simply unscrew this cap, replace the fuse, screw it right back on again. Now remember, when you're ready to travel, be sure to bring the vent all the way down and lock this latch in the locked position. Let's take a look at the operation on these windows. These windows will open like an awning. 
simply unlatch. Most of the handles will not have buttons on them, but the ones along the bottom will have a safety button on it. Just put, depress that button, lift up the latch, and the window can open to any desired opening that you would like. When it's at the location you'd like for it to stay, just tighten these knobs on both sides and your window is in place. Now, there are screens coming down from the top and of course they will latch together with the bottom screen. If you prefer blackout shades, you can lift this up. And many people prefer half and half. Get a little privacy and have some screen at the top. Be sure before you travel that the screens and the privacy panel are completely compressed. When you're ready to close the window, undo the latch on the side, pull the window closed and latch it back. Now there are two ways to latch this window closed. First, you can see down here, there is a slot in the middle. If you would like to have just a little airflow, but secure the window, then you can put this latch in that slot. That is great if you have a lot of condensation and you would like a small amount of ventilation. However, you can't travel with it in this mode. It will damage your window, so be sure before you travel, latch it all the way down in the front position so it is secured tightly. Again, push the button for the ones on the bottom, secure all the latches, the screen and the privacy panel in the compressed mode, and you're ready to travel. Below the seating, you will find the 12 volt plug-in and the two USBs, along with a 110 plug right here. The converter, if you press the top panel, opens up. Now this converter has all of the 12 volt fuses here and the 110 breakers on the right side. They're all labeled so that you can have easy reference to what they are working with. So if you're having an electrical issue, this is a great place to start. Now, the other thing the converter is doing for you is it's taking the 110 power from plugging in and it's charging your battery. Right next to the converter is the carbon monoxide LP detector. Now, this is another safety feature on the camper and it's wired directly to the battery. So whenever your camper is operating, this is here to keep you safe. Now, if the battery starts to get low on the camper, you will hear it chirp every 30 to 45 seconds. So that is telling you that you need to charge up the battery on your camper for it to do its job. If it's beeping continuously, then it is sensing something in the air and you wanna check it out to stay safe. The table that we talked about on the outside of the trailer, it mounts right here in this center post. Easy to install, just like we did it on the outside. Next to that is the air conditioner vent. Again, be sure that's open if you're running the air conditioner. Let's move on and take a look at the back of the seating. To put the back of this cushion down for a sleeping area, I like to remove this. It is Velcroed to the wall, so you just pull it away from the wall, and then this seat pulls forward until it clicks. That disengages it so it can lay down completely. Now you can see back there, there is a storage bin and new in 2022, this rear storage compartment has the covers split in half. So you can open up half of it at once. That's very handy if you like to use half of the seat up and only lay down the other half for sleeping. I wanna point out too that you have a 12 volt plug and two USBs on the back wall. On the other side, there's gonna be 110 plug there. Nice access for the cabinets up here for storage. Speakers on both sides and a button at the top for the light. One more thing with this backrest there is a lounger position that is halfway between seating and laying down. If you pull it up and hear the click, stop right there and you get this lounger or continue to pull it up until it clicks for the full seating position. Next, I wanna show you underneath this seat cushion where the Aldi system is. 
Underneath the seat cushion, you'll see the Aldi system, the back of the Nautilus system, and the water pump on the back wall. A few things I want to show you about this. First, with your Aldi system, there is a panel that lifts up right here. And if the controls on your panel, when you're turning your Aldi system on and off, go dark, then you need to replace the fuse. They give you extra fuses right here in this packet. And the way you do that is to pull out this fuse panel right here, replace that fuse, and then put it right back in. Very simple to do. You have two extra fuses that are provided there for you in case that happens. There's a few more things I wanna show you on the Aldi system. If the water coming out of your faucet tends to be too hot or too cold, there is an adjustment you can make right here underneath the seat. With this red cap with the triangle on the top pops right off and you flip it over and you use that triangle as a wrench. It fits right down here on the top and you turn it counterclockwise to make the water hotter and clockwise to make it cooler. After you've made the adjustment, flip it back over and pop it right back into place. One more thing I wanna show you, there is a yellow lever on the floor here and Aldi calls this a pressure relief valve, but it can act also as a low point drain. If you lift that lever, it is gonna drain the water out of the tank that's inside the Aldi. If you're trying to put your trailer in storage or be sure you have fresh water in the system, that's a great way to do that. There's also a filter right next to your water pump. You can see it in the back right here. This clear cap unscrews and you can simply clean the filter and put the cap back on. If you notice some debris in there or your water pump is not as strong as it used to be, you might check that filter. It might need cleaning. If you'd like to create a larger sleeping area, simply pull out the slats underneath the dinette on each side and then pull the cushions out to lay flat on top of them. Lay down the back cushions and you have a very large bed. The monitor panel and the light switches are to the left of the entrance door. Now on this left side, right here at the top, shows the level of the tanks from empty to full. And on the right, it's showing your battery charge from low up to good. To see those levels, simply push the button corresponding. There's the gray tank, which is empty. This one is not operable because there is no black tank. The fresh tank, which of course is empty, and the battery. Now, when you push the battery button, it is always going to show fully charged if you're plugged in at the campsite. So keep that in mind. If you would like to know the stage of your battery, then simply unplug and test it that way. There is an indicator light right here for the water pump. So when you turn your water pump on, you will see a red light right up at the top. And remember, there is another water pump switch in the Nautilus system outside. You also have your porch light, the sink light, which is the under lights right here under the cabinets. And then the accent lights are going to be underneath the cabinets in the seating area. Underneath the monitor panel is the smoke alarm. Now, unlike the LP detector, it is not wired directly to the battery. It is running on a nine volt battery. So you might want to carry an extra nine volt in case it gets low. It's just like the smoke alarm at your house it's gonna chirp about every 30 to 45 seconds if that battery gets low. And there is a test button on the front. If you push that, it will beep. That lets you know it's in good working order. One last thing, at this entrance door, there is a screen. So if you'd like to leave your door open, pull straight across. And when you need to open it, of course, it compresses right back into place. All of the appliances we've talked about here will have their own operation manuals and warranty information in the black New Camp bag that comes with your trailer. The owner's manual from New Camp, however, is found online for easy reference, and that's at newcamprv.com forward slash documents. Again, congratulations on your new 2022 Tab 320S, and we are so glad to have you as part of the New Camp family. And from all of your friends here at New Camp, we wish you many great adventures.